Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Dashboard Fridays. I'm Adam from Squared Up and I'm joined again by my colleague Tim. Hey Tim. Hi Adam, how are you doing? Very good, thanks. Um, Tim's joined us a number of times on Dashboard Fridays, most recently to talk about fantasy football. Um, this time we have a certainly more work-related topic. Uh, we're going to be talking through Tim's uh, Dora Metrics dashboards. Um, Tim, there's a really good um, blog written up on our website that covers sort of what these metrics are typically about and how this dashboard's built. So I've brought the dashboard up. Why don't you just give us a give us a, a, a tour through it? Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, these are the, the four Dora metrics um, that Google talk around in Accelerate and in their yearly report. Um, so I've kind of constructed several tiles to kind of show them in different ways. So we'll, we'll just start from the top, really. Um, first one doesn't need much introduction, deployment frequency. Um, and the, um, the, the Dora metrics or the Dora lab define like high performing teams as ones that can deploy more than once a day effectively. So I've just done a like a gauge that goes all the way up to one because kind of if you're beyond one, then you're you're doing well. And you know, what more could you possibly want? But obviously with this gauge tile, you could set it to any any limits you want. The other ticks that are on here that would make it go yellow and red are the other sort of um uh kind of parameters for medium and low performing teams that um the report has. But obviously Every company is different, every team is different. So you could you could set those to whatever relevant is relevant for you. Um, and then below, just a nice health block with the last uh, bunch of pipelines, the last six we've got in view here. So you can see there's one red and you could um, link straight through to that to Azure DevOps um, uh, if you wanted to go and investigate why that particular uh, pipeline has failed. Um, I should have said, yeah, like most of this data is from Azure DevOps because that's what we use at Squared Up for our CI CD process. Um, and alongside the, um, the gauge here, we've just got a simple line graph to show how the deployments uh, spike up and down, depending on how productive our engineering team have been. Uh, and then the next uh, metric is lead time. Um, so lead time for us, we define as when uh, we think the code's ready to go. And it's the difference between when the, uh, the engineer tells us the code is ready to be merged and when the, the code actually hits production. Uh, so again, typically with this uh, lead time, um, you can see here I've got this month and then I've got the, the previous week. Um, so you can kind of see that uh, last week was kind of slow over a longer, but only by an hour, so not a huge difference. And you can also see from the graph that lead time for us you know, spikes up and down. It's pretty common. You tend to have lots of ones that work with no problem. And then you have the odd one where someone's got to do some manual investigation. Um, I, I guess, I mean, we, we don't use um, Azure DevOps repos at Squared Up. Um, so I, I, I'm guessing this data is from, from GitHub. I can see it linked there over on the left in your, your data sources. So this, this is probably mixing in data from GitHub, data from Azure DevOps, maybe other tools in other places. Yeah, good point. Yeah, the, um, the so the lead time is all taken from uh, from GitHub and Azure DevOps, as you say. We use GitHub as our repo, but I mean that could be Bitbucket, um, it could be Azure DevOps itself that has its own repo. Um, and in similar vein, it's worth pointing out that the other CI/CD tools are su supported in Squared Up as well. So we could be using Circle CI or Jenkins or, or one of the other many wonderful CI/CD tools. I guess there could even be a case where maybe for you, you've got a few different teams. One of them's maybe using Circle CI, one's in Azure DevOps, and you could actually be creating these metrics by blending data from those tools together to get your, your one number. Yeah, definitely. I mean, really common with companies that have maybe um, grown with acquisitions. You know, you have legacy tools floating around. Um, you know, we, we don't really mind what tool you prefer. Some people, you know, very uh, very focused on a couple of specific tools and we can bring all that data in and combine it into one metric, which is a really nice capability to have. Nice. So, What's next? Tom? Yeah. yeah. Uh, change failure rates. Um, so this is where we have to confess, Adam, that we've been away on a lovely conference with Squared Up, as has most of the company. So although our change failure rate number is very low, it's actually because um, we weren't deploying anything the last few days. So that's only really... Uh, started to go again. So 
Normally our change rate failure rate, I would say hovers around 10%. Um, and change failure rate for us is um, a measure of things that we have just tried to deploy to production and have had some failure in one of the different production stages. So that could be uh, one of the regions we deploy to, or it could be one of the smoke tests that runs on those regions. Um, because yeah, that's that's the stuff that we hope never fails. So we like to keep an eye on it. So maybe, maybe a good official tip for others then, if you want to keep your failure rate low, send all your engineers off to the woods for a few days to run around and jump in rivers and that kind of stuff. Yeah, just send them on holiday. That'll work too. <laughs> sure. And then finally, we've got a uh, mean time to recovery. Um, so I did a, uh, did a podcast with um, Stephen Townsend on uh, slight reliability. And we kind of discussed that mean time to recovery technically means like recovering from outages. Um, at Squared Up, we have, but have had, well, almost no outages. So what we actually did was use mean time to recovery to track our escalation tickets. So, you know, the bugs that are like super important that we kind of down tools to jump on. Um, and this is tracking those, um, those bugs and how long it takes us to resolve them. So from the time we find them, to the time um, the code is push pushed out uh, to production for customers. Um, and you can see that, yeah, just over eight days for us to do the, the whole sort of raise, investigate, fix, and release. Um, nice. Next to that, obviously, I've got this outage types. Just again, nice to have another breakdown so you can see the sort of things that are impacting you, maybe where certain teams, specific teams, might need more support or uh, more kind of investigation into how they work. Um, and then just a bar chart you know, showing how we're, yeah, not by and large staying on top of our escalations, you know, never peaking more than four, never, never having zero, sadly. Nice. So where you mentioned sort of, um, you know, some of this is, is quite customized to how we work here at Squared Up. Is there any like really juicy SQL queries going on in any of these tiles that are worth sort of having a quick look at? Sure. Let's, um, let's dive into uh, change failure rate. I think it's probably a good one. Um, so, so the reason I guess this is juicy, if you like, or the SQL is relatively straightforward, is um, I've used three three different data sets, um, and that's because I'm combining multiple pipelines to get my data. Because um, you know, rather than do one tile per per project per pipeline, um, I've gathered them together. Um, so I've got two looking at the actual stages that we. Uh, so it's a pipeline plus the stages it deploys to. And if I switch to the SQL, um, this is can be seen in table one and table two. Table one is the more complicated pipeline that handles the different um, regions our platform deploys to. So I need to capture several different stages that could potentially fail. Uh, and then our simpler pipeline just has one, one stage that could fail. And essentially, I'm combining all that data together. I want to see all the failures. Um, and then I'm simply dividing by a count of this third table, which is all the pipelines that are we're trying to deploy to production. Um, and the actual time frame for those is set within the queries themselves. So we're just looking at seven days here. Um, and that is about it, really. You know, we divide divide by a number, roll it up, uh, multiply it by a hundred, um, and round by to two decimals, just so the number is a little bit more readable. And then we select the gauge visualization visualization over on the right hand side um, which is uh, you can set the range but yeah obviously percentage not to 100 uh, and then the the ticks I was referencing before I've just set up by doing the monitoring here so if we're greater than if we've got a failure rate greater than 30 um, we want to be amber if greater than 50 it's red and we really need to do something about it since 50 percent of everything we're trying to deploy to production is failing uh, and can see this in the preview tile here. And I think that's about it. Very nice, very nice. Um, okay, well, I'll go ahead and, and wrap us up. It's probably just worth repeating that, you know, we have a pretty comprehensive write-up um, on this subject already on the website. Uh, so if you found this video um, away from squaredup.com, head over there, you'll find you'll find Tim's, Tim's blog written up um, all about Dora metrics on there. 
Um, if you have any other questions about this dashboard or dashboarding in general, those SQL queries, anything like that, head over to Community Answers. Uh, that's community.squadup.com. And if you are interested in any other interesting dashboards people have shared, uh, we're running a dashboard competition um, sort of ongoing at the moment. So there are loads of cool submissions coming in. Head over to our dashboard gallery. Uh, that's squaredup.com slash dashboard gallery. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So just to say thank you to Tim for joining me yet again on the series. Thanks, Tim. My pleasure. Um, and thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time. Thank you. Thank you.